Hello Cassiopeians and welcome to Digital Cassia. Today we'll be taking a look at the AB550, or as I like to call it, the OOH. Released in 1991, it carries the 372 module, which is unique to this model. There are only two variants to this watch, uh, one being silver and one being gold, which is this one. Despite its appearance, the case of the watch is made of resin that's painted this nice shiny gold color, as well as the buttons on the face of the watch. The dial is a dark gray, almost black color with the gold tone markers, and it has these four cutouts which have various digital displays. So the hands are gold painted plastic and the crystal is made of acrylic. So on the profile shot you can see that there are no pushes or crown here um, but you can see the front buttons protruding out from the watch. And on the left hand side you can see that there are two pushes, one inset adjust button and one protruding mode button. So the bracelet is stainless steel and it has the easy adjust clasp. It's gold on one side and silver on the other side. The bracelet number is S-269L. On the other half of the bracelet we have the Casio labeled buckle. The back is stainless steel and clips to the case underneath the bracelet by the lugs. You can see that it is made in Japan and was probably one of the last watches to be made in Japan before they moved overseas. As with all of the AB series, there is no backlight on this watch. Also, it doesn't have a demo mode or a diagnostic mode. So we'll go straight into setting the digital time. And we do this by pressing the mode button until we see the display flash. So in the time set mode, we press the top left adjust button and the seconds will start to flash. We can press the forward button on the front to reset the seconds to zero. Then we use the mode button and we can go backwards and forwards using the reverse and forward buttons on the front. So we'll set this to 3.30 p.m. So next up is the year, and this runs from 1985 through to 2029. So we'll set this to 2020. Next is the month, and then the date, and we'll set this to June 15th. So with the date and time set, we press the adjust, and we'll go back to the mode of the adjust and then press the mode to go back to timekeeping. Should be noted there is no daylight savings time on this watch. So to set the analog part, we press and hold the adjust button while in timekeeping mode. So the hour hand moves once every 20 seconds, but when we're adjusting, you can see it's moving really fast, but that is three clicks to every minute. And we have to be careful when we get close because that minute hand will move every 20, 40, and 60 seconds. So there it goes, it moves. So now we can just make sure that we're gonna be hitting 332 when the seconds actually hit zero. Okay, so we confirmed that the analog and the digital are in sync. So while we're in timekeeping, we can press the reverse button to toggle between 12 and 24 hour formats. And the forward button will display the next schedule, which we haven't set yet. So let's go to the first function, which is the telememo. And we do this by pressing the mode button on the left. To set a new record, we press and hold the adjust and the icon starts flashing in the top display. 
So we use the reverse and forward buttons to input characters, either letters, numbers or symbols. And once we're done, we can move to the right by pressing the mode button. This memo can be up to eight characters in length. So moving on to the numbers, it uses a combination of the right hand and bottom displays. It starts off in the right hand and we can go up to 12 numbers in length and you can have spaces and dashes. Once you're completed, press the adjust button and it stores the record in memory. The memory will then sort into alphabetical order. I only have one record for now, but you can have up to 50, and that is shared with the schedule memo too. So the next function is the private tele memo. So on this one, you have to put in a pin number. The numbers rotate one through nine, and using the forward button to stop the digit on the character, you can go backwards again using the reverse and that kind of puts them out of sync. Uh, trying to record this on camera was very difficult so it took a few attempts. But let's try and get this going. Once you got your number correct it says OK. If you get it wrong it will say error. So make sure you remember that number. Little key icon appears in the left hand display and now we can input an entry in here. Now this is exactly the same as the telememo part, so we'll just put in some characters here. And it's the same again, press the adjust button and that stores that in memory. But this is in the personal private secret part. So we move on to the next function which is the schedule. It comes up there as two records out of 50 have used. And it's blank at the moment, so let's press the adjust and get something in there. So the first it asks for is a date. So we'll put in today's date so we can see this. Now it moves on to the time and we'll put in 3.43, should be good. Next we have presets and we have doctor, travel, appointment, meeting or telephone now uh, we can use a custom one so we just press the mode and we can put in whatever we want and this can be up to 12 characters in length So with that complete, we press the adjust button, it sorts it, and now we can move on to timekeeping mode to see that one in action. So we have a 20 second three beep alarm for the schedule memo and it displays the message across the top. So we move on to our next function which is the daily alarm. And we can test this by pressing and holding the forward button. The reverse button toggles the alarm and hourly signal on and off. To set an alarm, we press and hold the adjust button, 
and then we use a combination of the reverse, forward and the mode buttons to set the time as we did before. So we'll set this for 3.45, which is coming up soon. To complete the alarm setup, press the adjust button. So we'll head back to timekeeping mode and wait for the alarm. So it has a 20 second two beep alarm. You know what I've got to do is show you how to change your pin number. So let's go back to the password protect and here we press the adjust button. So when we do this it shows old and it asks you to put in your current number. Once you put in your pin, press the forward again, it says it's okay, and now it asks for a new number. And now we can put in a new number. This might take a little while, my reflexes are not as good as they used to be. Not since my days of playing the Sega Mega Drive, or Genesis as it was in the US. Anyway, let's put this in, one, two, three, four. Press the forward button, it says OK, and now I have a number that I might just remember. So let's move on to the next function. In this case, it is the countdown timer. We can start and stop using the forward button. You see it has 24 hour limit. And using the reverse, resets back to zero, or the time you originally set. So let's put in a new time, press the adjust. We'll move it over to the minutes. We'll set it for one minute and press the adjust to lock that in place. So let's start that off and wait for the timer to finish. So we get a 10 second 4 beep alarm with that one. So now we'll move on to the next function, which is the stopwatch. So we have a similar thing. We use the forward button to start and stop. And we use the reverse button for split time and reset. With the stopwatch running, we can press the split time. We've got 11.96, we can stop the stopwatch and press the split again. And we get 16.07. Press it again and we reset back to zero. So that completes the functions of the AB550. As you can see, there's quite a lot of them. So let's get this gold on the wrist. So you can see now why I call it the ooh. Okay, it's made of cheap materials, but this is a beautifully designed Casio. The band is just the right width. Uh, the gold just looks amazing and the watch design is just to die for. So with its mainly resin construction, it comes in at a pretty light 57 grams. So the scores for the AB550 is functionality 8, practicality 8, quality 7, rarity 7 and collectability 8. This gives a total score of 7.6 out of 10. In 1991, Japan were proving their tech superiority with Nintendo and Sega battling it out with their 16-bit consoles. Casio were also up there with the launch of this beautiful timepiece. The AB550 is a particularly well-designed data bank watch that could only really be improved with the addition of a backlight. An all stainless steel case would have been the icing on the cake, but with a price tag of $99.95, it would have bumped the price up way more than it already was. So it's understandable why Casio took the route they did. With its many functions and beautiful looks, the AP550 is holding its value pretty well. 
However, the paint does tend to wear off the front buttons as they sit higher than the crystal. So finding one unblemished is not easy. So I expect to be paying about the same as a common Marlin for a top condition one. What's your opinion of the AB550? Leave a comment below and be sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel. You could, if you wish, also click that little bell to be notified when a new video is released. So once again, thank you for watching. Uh, I'll leave you with the specs and until next time, ta -ra.